stay on a different floor because she's afraid. He's by his co-conspirator, William Goode. She barely stay staying at home alone. <laughs> Mindy, go go hurt somebody, Mindy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. The customers are members of the Scientology religion. He uh, lives in a van, he drives from location to location to create a conflict. Uh, the YouTube video is entitled, Known Violent Stalker on Probation. Scott Hotzer says he, he repeatedly blocks in front of Ms. Coster's place of business. Front yelling They're about 5150. The California Welfare and Institution says, I am the fire. That is why the fire department was here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and insane and laughing manically. That doesn't sound like me at all. Or this and laughing manically, he yelled, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. As a gang member, this is real shit. <laughs> As a gang member, yelled. Fox Setter's mentor, William Good and monetize social media. Bad, bad. I'm not an I'm not an anymore. activist. I'm a paid I'm a actor. paid actor. Uh, I'm not sure. I might get counsel. I might not get counsel. I'm kind of deciding on it right now. I mean, I would wait and speak to William, but this doesn't. I after listening to the judge, the judge wasn't letting any hearsay in. Uh, the police report. So, well, the lady tried to enter the police report as evidence, but a lot of people don't realize that a police report's just a piece of paper. It's not evidence. We started off in the commissioner's uh, room. The the lawyer, Jillzine Maxwell's lawyer, she gave me uh, six papers, added additional stuff to claims of stuff that I had done in D.C. She claimed that I was in jail in Virginia or that I'm from Virginia. She claimed that I was a, a dangerous felon, which I don't have any felonies. She wanted to change judges from a commissioner to a judge. And I agreed with her on that on that move. They moved us over into another courtroom. They didn't even tell Good's lawyer because Good's lawyer had nothing to do with it. He didn't. She didn't even know that it got moved. I had to call Streets and let Streets know that it got moved to the courtroom. So then she popped in over there. She was trying to basically file like an emergency injunction. Was basically what she was trying to verbally do. Uh, Francois was in danger and she was up on the fifth floor and couldn't come down she wore furry crocs to court <laughs> like that's where it's super tricky what good's lawyer said was there's no specific allegations she's trying to say that we're a dangerous mob a gang was the verbiage and i'll read it here in a little bit she wore crocs so like if there was ever a time to um if there was ever a time to uh, get dressed up, I guess. Uh, yeah, they, th they thought I was a lawyer. You know, show my fancy shoes. <laughs> She's trying to say that all the different incidences that have happened outside the thing, including the homeless man riding down the street on the bike, somehow is a reason why she deserves a uh, restraining order against me. So I am thinking about getting counsel, but the more, like, after sitting there watching how the judge was handling, the claims and just was not allowing any haphazard evidence into it it was real like short and simple to the point did you put hands on them yes no did you make any threats yes no oh, she, no and, yeah that was what the hearing was about the temporary restraining order had gotten uh what wasn't uh approved so she was trying to say that it was timely and miss foster was it felt that she was in fear and she was here, but she told the bailiff that, yeah, she's hiding away on a different floor because she's afraid. I have only seen Foster twice. The first Coster. I, I don't even know the names. Like, I'm not going to get any of the names right. I just wanted to read a couple of the, a couple of the things from this paperwork that she just filed today. Hockstetter and a gang organized by his co-conspirator, William Goode, have assaulted and battered her customers, including with tear gas. Oh they have beaten up pedestrians and forced customers into the street, causing danger not only to Miss Coster, but to members of the public driving on Franklin Avenue and walking on the sidewalk. Hoxetter engages in and threatens violence, including fist fights with plaintiff's customers. He's a convicted violent felon. He is scary, mentally unstable individual who has caused Miss Coster emotional distress requiring her to seek treatment and care from her physicians and hire professional security. She fears staying at home alone. <laughs>
While Hochstetter asserts that he's a protester, this petition does not seek restrainment of the content of an arguably protected speech. Arguably, because it is fucking arguably protected speech. It seeks only protection from threatening and violent conduct and harassment and the severe emotional distress called to cause to plaintiff thereby. Plaintiff's fear is evident in the video attached herein. The case is not about free speech. Hoxeter's acts and incitement to violence are not protected any more than any, uh, oh, this is good, any more than those of any hoodlum who screams threats at any victim, acts violently, and incites others to actual violence. What? Mindy, go go hurt somebody, Mindy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> plaintiff currently seeks a civil restraining order to keep Hoxeter at a reasonable distance from plaintiff, her home, and her business. Francois Quaster is the owner and proprietor of La Poubelle, a French restaurant. <laughs> she and her family have maintained this restaurant at the location for decades. Listen to this. This one's good. La Poubelle is across the street from the Church of Scientology Celebrity Center, and accordingly, many of her neighbors and customers are members of the Scientology religion. Uh, let me read that sentence again. This is coming from them. La Poubelle is across the street from the Church of Scientology Celebrity Center, and accordingly, many of her neighbors and customers are members of the Scientology religion. Scott Hackstetter is a member of the gang of persons attacking persons and entities allegedly associated with the Church of Scientology. Hackstetter is a homeless man from Illinois and Virginia <laughs> who lives in a van he drives from location to location creating conflict. In 2014, Hackstetter was charged with felony... <laughs> hold on. Me to hold anything yeah, I got it. Felony aggravated battery against a peace officer. I wasn't charged with any felonies. They're fucking idiots. And was convicted in a superseded indictment of felony resisting arrest. That's a lie. Never. I, I have no. I have no felonies. Yeah. Hoxter has been arrested several other other known times. Is believed to have a criminal record in Virginia. I don't have a criminal record in Virginia. Indeed, research on Hoxter reveals another video of him on YouTube talking about having guns in his car. Near the end of the video, Hoxetter appears in a leopard skin coat, wearing antlers and screaming at police through a megaphone. That doesn't sound like me. You know where obviously, to make obviously, guy. yeah. Well, wait, it, it's coming. The, the Jan Six, the Jan enemy. Six is coming. Oh my goodness. Obviously, <laughs> mentally deranged. <laughs> she has a psych degree. Uh, the YouTube video is entitled "Known Violent Slender. Stalker on Probation." Scott Hoxetter says DC police suspect him of having guns in van. Well, they did. They did. That's one from one of my haters. I don't know what hater video is that. Another frightening online video shows the same incident where Hoxett is screaming at someone, asserting that he's been stalking Ashley Babbitt's mother in Washington D.C. The woman killed in, at the Capitol during the January 6, 2021 demonstrations. The videos are not dated, but are therefore ra rarely recent. Plaintiff is justifiably emotionally disturbed and upset regarding Hoxtetter's prior acts of mental instability and stalking others. <laughs> Hoxtetter's acts of stalking Miss Coster, his threats and acts of violence performed directly in front of her place of business and which were specifically undertaken there to harass and intimidate her are, are most alarming. This is precisely what he is doing. Intimidating, harassing, stalking, seeking to destroy her business, drive away her customers, and causing her emotional distress and pain. Francois, Francois Coster will give evidence of the impact of this on her health and well and mental well-being consistent with the declaration filed with this court. Coster uh, was apparently attracted to the turmoil created by William Goode and came to the area to participate in the harassment initiate, initiated by Goode. He has appeared at La Poubelle to harass Miss Coster since early February. His purported his purported basis for harassing Ms. Coster is that she wrote a letter in aid of sentencing to a former neighbor and customer who was charged with sexual assault and appeared at court to support his wife and parents. While he occasionally yells out comments, while he occasionally yells out comments at and into the restroom that are apparently about the issue, largely he simply harasses Mr. Coster, Ms. Coster and her customers and assaults, threatens, and batters customers or passerbys unfortunate unfortunate enough to come into contact with him on the narrow sidewalk <laughs> he repeatedly blocks in front of miss coster's place of business there are dozens of such incidences the following incidences exemplify these acts 
Cox said he repaired at La Poubelle on February 9th, 2024, yelling mostly non sequitur. Non sequitur. Non sequitur. Hawks said it roamed alone immediately in front of the restaurant yelling about 5150. The California Welfare and Institution Code section for involuntary hospitalization of persons who are dangerous to self or others. And calling Ms. Coster a moron and more non sequitur statements such as, I am the fire. That is why the fire department was here. <laughs> While zooming in on Ms. Coster with his camera. Exhibit 2, video clip, February 9th, 2024. Wearing a red king robe and a shirt which read, Drink up, pussies. <laughs> Acting drugged and insane and laughing manically that doesn't sound like me at all this is real this is a, this is the paperwork like i was handed this today man i'm reading this like <laughs> let me go over that again <laughs> wearing a red king's robe and a skirt and a shirt that read drink up pussies that's my kitty cat so they had nothing to do with pussies it had everything to do with kitty cats <laughs> acting drugged in her or insane and laughing manically he yelled you're an idiot you're an idiot you're an idiot he zoomed in on miss coster and yelled People are calling your restaurant. Oh my God, please don't call, guys. Oh, don't, don't call. He's obsessed with and videoing, videoing and overhearing Mr. Coster as shown in, in the clip. Among other things, he yelled, come and tell me about the ridge, the rape. They misspelled rape with ridge. And why you supported it, and I'll leave. Because I did. I asked her if she wants to, oh, she no. wants to come, like, on come on record and give a statement about it. Then I wanted to talk like a normal human being. So <laughs> as a gang member, this is real shit. <laughs> As a gang member yelled through a megaphone into the restaurant, Hoxetter laughed and further yelled into the resta restaurant and at Ms. Coster, who was inside. She, si she filmed some of his taunts and closed the curtains. Hoxetter yelled, come on, you've already filmed me. I'm DOA, Defender of Ants. I'm the one that <laughs> shut down your business tonight, Friday night. Hoxetter repeatedly yelled into the restaurant while filming Ms. Coster and her customers. This, this is what corruption looks like. God, it was so horrible to say that. He uh, yelled into the restaurant as Miss Coster while Bill Tabner saying, you're evil. They're all threes here. Uh, Close the curtain tighter and he said, it doesn't close you, moron. <laughs> Later that evening, a man tried to ride past the restaurant on a bicycle and one of the gang members yeah. elbowed, elbowed the man. And the man faced a person who had hit him and was attacked from behind by Hockstetter, who knocked the man down and two others, a huge companions, jumped into the fight as Hockstetter punched the man and slammed the man against the car. Hockstetter's mentor, William Goode, thereafter... Yeah, he's my mentor. <laughs> Streets is my mentor. Well, I mean, I did, like, I was watching him and shit. William Goode thereby praised Hockstetter, saying, I love the way DOA Hockstetter didn't hesitate to take out that guy. However, Hockstetter was arrested. Not true. That's just not true. I was not arrested for any bike incident at all. Thanks, very yeah. Yeah. of Hockstetter and his hate gang blocking the sidewalk in front of La Poubelle, and one of them That's blocked his way. The group, including Hockstetter, surrounded him, taunted him, and challenged him. Hockstetter challenged a man to touch somebody, and I dare you to touch me. The man said, you're just trying to antagonize people. Hockstetter replied, yes, I am, because I don't like little bitches touching me. <laughs> Exhibit 9, video clip, February 13, 2024. On February 14, 2024, Hoxetter set himself up in front of La Poubelle, harassing customers coming in and out of the restaurant. In one incident, while Hoxetter was blocking the sidewalk, a man allegedly touched his arm. That's a battery. Allegedly touched his arm, resulting in Hoxetter cursing at the man. Which is true. Which yeah. is a female customer walking in the entrance asked why is he, why, why he was harassing people. Hoxetter told her, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he just elbowed me, you piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Is that in there? That sounds yeah. about right, man. That sounds about what something I would say. <laughs> if someone elbowed me and touches me, I'm going to tell him to fuck off. And so on February 16, 2000, Hoxeter was arrested at La Poubelle after he was involved in a tear gassing La Poubelle customers. The LAPD press release describes the incident. On February 16, 2024, Hollywood officers initially met with two victims of a reported battery at Hollywood Station front desk. The officers obtained signed private person's arrest statement forms, and around 10.30 p.m., the officers conducted a follow-up to the area of the 5900 block of Franklin Avenue where they located and arrested two assault victims. So, um, and, and so they weren't charged, charged with battery. With, they were arrested for uh, they were gassing. And, uh, and that all got dismissed. While officers were at the 5900 block of Franklin Avenue affecting the first two arrests, they were alerted of a second physical alteration at the location. The officers detained the described suspect, met, met with the victim of the battery, and provided the victim with a field show-up admonishment. 
The victim positively identified the detained individual and the suspect, and the suspect uh, individual as a suspect, and the suspect was arrested. All three suspects were booked for California Penal Section 182 conspiracy and 22810 unlawful use of tear gas. The officer's investigation revealed that the that the battery crimes and the unlawful use of tear gas were committed by multiple suspects whose actions were planned, organized, and coordinated. The investigation included evidence that tear gas canisters were distributed for purposeful use against others upon confronting and baiting them into physical alterations. Good bragged to his follower, Scott Hoxetter, that he had gotten donations for the bail of Hoxetter and another violent follower who, like Hoxetter, has also been arrested outside of La Poubelle. On March 2nd, 2024, Hoxetter repeatedly yelled into La Poubelle. At his van parked at the entrance to La Poubelle, he yelled at some customers leaving the restaurant. He then followed them down the block and across the street, continuing to curse them, including calling them kitty fuckers. I didn't, I didn't follow anyone across any streets. That's a lie. The same day, like still, but none of this has to do with Francois. At all. None of this. This is all, if they have a criminal issue or want to do an emergency injunction or restraining order or go about it, then they might have a matter. But Francois, what I do with to other people, what it has no bearing on, no on Francois at all. The same day, he used a megaphone to yell into the restaurant and berate Miss Coster. Notwithstanding that the assertions by Hoxetter were lies, the acts were intended to disrupt the business inside the restaurant, which also violates the Los Angeles law regarding use of sound enhancing equipment, which they use the, the speakers outside and that's okay. Amplified sound. So Hoxetter also told customers leaving that they are trash among other random profanity and slurs customer. Well, they are Hence trash. the name of trash. Yeah. Means trash. On March 6, 2024, Hoxer admitted on a streaming video in case there was any question, uh, in case there was any question if he was a protester or simply a man harassing others for clickbait and monetized social yeah, media. That, that I'm not an, I'm activist, not an anymore, activist anymore. I'm a paid, I'm a paid actor. actor. <laughs> you do technically you do pay, me. pay me. <laughs> and a later incident on March 14, 2024, Hoxetter assaulted and battered a man who came out of the restaurant. While that man was on the phone with the police, Hoxetter loudly cursed at the man, calling him a lying son of a bitch, but quickly packed up the van in which he lives in and parked in front of the La Poo entrance and fled before the police arrived. Yeah, the fake incident that the, the guy fucking lied. But that guy chased me like. Yeah, and the guy chased poor Solomon. Tell him. Yeah, he chased me. I said, watch your back, which isn't even considered a criminal threat. And then he chased me. Like, if you're trying to make yourself look like the victim, why are you chasing a minor? She says Ms. Coster meets each of the elements of the statute. Two videos which form part of the evidence of plaintiff's request for restraining order show Ms. Coster to be frightened and distressed when she is hounded on the way to her vehicle. Since February 2nd, 2024, when the campaign of harassment commenced to the present, there has been multiple arrests by the police for various forms of violence, including use of tear gas, mace, pepper spray, fist fights, and at least one auto accident in front of the restaurant associated with the chaos. I got a definition. Including the use of tear gas, mace, pepper spray, fist fights and at least an auto accident like i literally got blamed for the auto accident that i reported where that person fucking did the u-turn i got blamed for the fucking accident fuck man i'm gonna get blamed for it raining tomorrow <laughs> shit all right the, oh here we get back to this there has been swatting incidents in which the fire department and lapd have been called to the properties for no apparent reason taking valuable first responders off the street where they may help others in need the videos demonstrate that Ms. Coster, her staff, and her restaurant have been targeted. Ms. Coster and her physician will tell you, will tell the court that she has suffered extreme emotional distress and physical harm as a result of the conduct of her agitators. It is anticipated that the defendant will allege that the First Amendment protects his speech. Oh no, you really think so? <laughs> the First Amendment does not protect speech that leads to imminent lawless action or the acts of harassment addressed below. The two legal prongs that constitute incitement of imminent lawless action are as follows. Advocacy of force or criminal activity does not receive First Amendment protections and is likely to incite or produce such action. Our security almost attacked me. Yeah, no, 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 no mention of the attacks on us. Hoxer's harassment and intimidation of petitioner's customers is enjoinable by the petitioner because a reasonable operator of a retail establishment would sub suffer substantial emotional distress if all the establishment customers are harassed and threatened. Hoxer's protests do not even make a pretense 
of exchanging information or ideas. That's not true. I've been handing out flyers. It's a pretext for intimidation and monetized social media clicks. Hawk said his real purpose is to taunt and intimidate to take unauthorized pictures of the persons that he frightens and then commercialize those images on his social media feeds in violation of Civil Code Section 3344. His harassment campaign has no legitimate relationship to any issue of public interest. Accordingly, speech is entitled to minimum First Amendment protection. Reasonable content neutral restrictions on, on Hoxeter's speech, such as a buffer zone and a prohibit, prohibitions on stalking and intimidating face-to-face -face yelling confrontations are unquestionably constitutional. So that is where the police are failing. That's right. The police should be making a, a buffer zone for the protest. That's where the police have failed. But somehow, my, the police not knowing how to fucking handle a protest, the restraining order requested here serves as an important governmental and public purpose, the prevention of violence and harassment, and the protection of petitioners' legitimate safety, privacy, and property rights that Section 527.6 was enacted to serve. Because petitioner seeks an injunction only to the extent that is necessary, Necessary to prevent Hoxter's continuing course of harassment, the injunction requested neither overly broad nor unconstitutional. Conclusion. Sagat Hoxter must be restrained from harassing Ms. Coster. Hoxter should be required to stay 100 yards from Ms. Coster, her residence, and her place of business. He should not be required, he should be required not to harass, annoy, threaten, assault, or block her moves in any way. That's it. I, they, they declined all of that, like, all of this was like not having it. Oh, uh, they just did a continuance. We continued on so yeah, I'll just be continuing. He said, you know what, I have not honestly, he told Will's lawyer, I have not honestly looked through this, but I know about it. Everybody knows about it. You can buy through the whole LAPD, everyone knows about it, what's going on. And so he's like, I, and he kind of caught his words and was like, uh, I know that this is going to be related. I know that they're separate incidents, but it is part of the same thing. So I'm going to give, and Will's lawyer was really, um, you know, like, we're not asking for our one time. I tied my first tie today. But you said it's yeah, no, she admitted she admitted that the, her customers are Scientologists. I'll see you, Scotty. All right, later. Good Thanks for coming. Of course, I appreciate of course. it. Later. All right, well, I'm going to walk to my car, and then I got to fi figure out the address and stuff of where my fur coat is.